everyone, it's your friend Think Noodles, and welcome to Ask Think for Monday, March 2nd, 2015. And it's still cold here. I'm so mad at the groundhog because I wanted winter to end. It's been so cold here. I think it was the coldest February. February. I don't know why. I don't know, whatever. Anyway, February that we've had, I think, ever in New York. And it's killing me, especially when I have to walk Kopi. But anyway, last week I asked you guys. What was your, like, not favorite, but what was one of your childhood fears or current fears if you're younger? Uh, and we start with Neth110, who's afraid of getting lost in a crowd because he doesn't know which way to go and he doesn't know where anyone he knows is. And that's a pretty common fear, uh, especially for younger people. Uh, and, and I would recommend that, uh, you know, you might want to stay away from New York because it's always a crowd and it's very easy to get lost. Smiley Freak says, as a kid, I would have a fear of a monster that lived under my bed when he was around six or seven. He would always tell his mom or sister to turn off the lights because he was afraid to turn off the lights. The monster would grab his foot before he could get into bed. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, that's really, really, really a common fear. Costas says when he was a child, he was really, really, really afraid of his uncle who just seemed so tall and scary. I wonder how tall he actually is. Mariah Mancuso says, I had and still have a fear of squirrels. They are the creepiest animals and they're just furry rats. And once there was a dead squirrel in your pool, ew. Uh, and yeah, they do kind of get rabies. Or they, they don't all have rabies, but they can get rabies. And typically, not, not typically, but um, some of them do. Uh, but yeah, squirrels, squirrels are like, well, I mean, you know, rats do have fur. But I think squirrels are like rats with furry tails. That's what I see them as. You know, if you if you just take the, the fur off their tail, I, I think they would look exactly like a rat. The Maddie is psycho or physco says my fear is medical dummies and puppets. And this one's really specific. Once I had to touch one on a field trip, then I kind of hid in the back for a while and watched them. The creepiest part was the doctor on training them, gave them names and illnesses and some teeth were missing or like rotten and ill. <laughs> Jay-Z Lo says, my fear as a child is getting in front of other kids and having to do something like my face literally will go red as a tomato, not kidding. And that is not just a fear that kids have, adults have it as well. You know, fear of public speaking or, or being in public in front of other people is a tremendously common fear uh, for adults and children alike. Um, just being in the spotlight is, is really nerve wracking for a lot of people. Double Eye Spooky Cat says, my fear is sleep. Wait, 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 let me explain. I don't fear it itself. I fear what's going on during sleep. For instance, you could be getting robbed and have no clue. So you must be a pretty heavy sleeper. And I guess I could see that. Francisco Sanchez says, my fear is chickens. Because one time I was at a farm when I was three and this one chicken pecked me and I started bleeding. So yeah, Equipo Ricky. Uh, anyway, Team Ricky, I, I'm not sure what that has to do with anything, but I, I had a roommate in college who used to tell me that he was afraid of geese because of the same thing and because geese can be really mean. Um, and he was like near a pond when he was a kid and a goose went right up to him and bit him on the knee. And, <laughs> and, uh, and that, he was always afraid of geese ever since. Imagine Awesome says, my fear as a child was merry-go-rounds. Yes, I just said that. When I was little, I jumped on and missed, and the blades underneath it hit me. Yes, there are blades under those things, and I limped for a week. Curse you, merry-go-rounds. And I think what you mean, they're not necessarily blades, like razor blades to cut little children's legs off, but I think that um, uh, there are supports under certain areas, and it's like a structure, but they are kind of, I mean, you know, they, they, they could definitely hit you and cut you and all kinds of stuff like that. So I totally understand. I mean, merry-go-rounds, I'm not afraid of them, but I've definitely fallen off of them. They're pretty pretty dangerous school schoolyard um, apparatus, I guess, because I've, <laughs> I've, I've fallen off of them before, especially when people get them going real fast and uh, your friend pushes you a little bit and you lose your handle and you just go flying off the edge. Raul Victor says, I'm not a child anymore as I'm 14, but I have this phobia since I was little. Cat Sarita phobia, the aversion and fear of cockroaches. My mind ceases to function whenever I see one and I suffer from a small level of paranoia after I see one. I never went to a psychologist to see if it's a serious phobia, but I behave differently from other people that only have disgust of them roaches. And yeah, they're pretty disgusting. Um, my wife kind of freaks out when she sees them and calls me in. It's always me, you know, oh, there's a roach. Well, 
Actually, we don't see them at home ever. I think it's because we're in a high rise and they can't climb this high. I don't know. That's probably not true. But whenever we see them on the street, you know, I, I, I mean, I'm not going to crush one with my hand, but I'm not afraid of them at all. I think it's funny the way that people react to them and freak out. And I just go and, you know, I jump like whenever I kill one, like I make a production out of it. It's not like I walk over, you know, and I stomp on it, you know, with one foot or something like that to like, you know, my wife's oh, there's a roach and I go and kill it. No, I like run up to it and jump up in the air with both feet and come slamming down on it. Like, yeah, you know, and I get really excited about it and make a huge thing of it. Eli Amazing says, but seriously, I am super afraid of blood. If I see more than a tiny amount in one place, I'll most likely vomit or at least start to feel really fragile. Is that normal? Yeah, that's normal too. Uh, normal for both kids and adults to, you know, to feel nauseous at the sight of blood or faint at the sight of blood. It is really, really common. Mr. Sandman98 says his biggest fear was and still is heights at night. Just standing somewhere high and looking down at night isn't my thing. I just can't. I feel sick. Now, that's interesting that uh, it's not just heights, but it's heights at night. Because um, normally people, when they're afraid of heights, it doesn't matter what time of the day it is. So I wonder what it is about nights that makes him more afraid of it. <laughs> Dina Elvich says, my biggest fear is go -Gurt. Really? In first grade, my friend tried to get a gogurt open. He twisted it, and if you guys don't know what it is, it's like it's like yogurt in um, in like a plastic, like you know, like those popsicles that you freeze in the freezer. There's like a piece of plastic, um, and it's got the liquid in it. You throw it in the freezer, and you just cut the top off and eat it. It's like that, except it has yogurt in it. And so he twisted and squeezed it and couldn't get it. He asked me if I could get it, and I did. It exploded all over my face, and all I saw was pink. Oh yeah, this was in first grade and I haven't eaten a go-gurt since I'm in fifth grade. <laughs> oh, that must have been so embarrassing. Now, one of the most common fears, and this is a very common fear as a kid, is being afraid of the dark. Then a few people said that they were afraid of dolls. And just because, you know, I, I think that's common because they're used in horror movies a lot. And, you know, the dolls have a lot of times expressionless faces. I know that uh, my wife, not that she's really afraid of it, maybe, but um, she doesn't like uh, you know people wearing masks like at a masquerade ball. Um, and I actually don't like that either very much because of the same reason. You know, it's a person walking around with this expressionless face, and it's just really creepy. A few people said at Chuck E. Cheese, and uh, I get that because. That's kind of what Five Nights at Freddy's is based off of. It's the animatronic characters at something like Chuck E. Cheese. So I can see that being a common fear. Now, one of the really, really common ones was clowns. Uh, for the same reason, maybe, as the expressionless faces on dolls. You know, clowns have a smile painted on their face, even if they're frowning or they're mad or whatever. The smile's still there painted or, or the sad face, even if they're smiling. You know, it's a bit weird uh, with the face paint. Uh, and it, you know, it doesn't show the emotions of the person behind it, uh, no matter how they're actually feeling. Now, I think the most common one, and uh, it's my biggest fear, is spiders. I, when I was a kid, um, you know, I can't remember when I started getting afraid of them, but I know that that movie Arachnophobia really, really cemented it for me. Uh, my dad's really afraid of spiders as well, uh, but. Uh, yeah, I, I ugh, like any bug, almost any bug. I am no problem with like I was talking about the cockroaches. They don't scare me at all. Even mice, they don't really scare me. I mean, if one like comes out like I'm walking along and it, you know, it darts out in front of me. It's not because it's a mouse. It's just that something just jumped out in front of me after I realized, oh, it's a mouse. Like I'm not scared rats. I'm not scared. But spiders and snakes actually. Um, and, and snakes was a common one. I don't actually know why I didn't put that in, but uh, it was fairly common, but not as common as spiders. But um, but yeah, spiders and snakes really scare me. And um, like I said, with bugs, I'll kill anything. Most things, I'll kill my hand. I don't really care. It's not, it doesn't bother me at all. Um, you know, I'm like, little roaches I'll smash with my hand, but you know, like the, the good sized ones, the ones that fly. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't smash those with my hand because they have guts and stuff. So those go with my feet. But when I see a spider, my first reaction is not to kill it. It is to run in terror. Um, I I scream. I I just I just get out of there because I'm afraid. Like for some reason, and it's not an unfounded fear uh, that 
the spider, if I go for it, I swear it's going to jump on me. <laughs> like it knows I'm coming, it sees it, and it's going to jump on me. And I don't think that they would do that. They're just trying to avoid me and what I'm doing. But I'm always worried that they're going to jump on me. And ugh. Um, you know, also because spiders are pretty poisonous. Certain ones can, you know, can do some pretty bad damage. And, and oh, I do not want to talk about this anymore. So <laughs> the entertainer said, and I thought this one was really kind of hilarious <laughs> when I read it. It just made me laugh out loud. So the entertainer says, in my earlier life, I was scared of wait for it teeth. Yeah, well, it's because my grandparents were visiting and one night I was brushing my teeth. I went to rinse my teeth and I looked in my teeth washing glass or I guess, you know, the, 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 the glass of water that you would rinse your mouth with and his granddad's teeth were in there and I was quite scared. I'm still scared of other things, but... <laughs> I thought that was so funny and how, what a traumatic experience for a young noodler is that you know you go to brush your teeth in the bathroom your grandparents are visiting and your grandfather leaves his dentures in a glass <laughs> sink and you're like <gasps> I just I thought that was so so funny <laughs> so guys no one really um contributed a question for next week so I came up with one on my own and it has to do with school I know you guys don't like school that much, but uh, I want you to answer the question is, who is your favorite teacher so far? And it doesn't have to be this year or last year or, you know, even it could have been five years ago, whatever. Mine's going to be like 30 years, not 30 years, ago, but, you know, a long time ago. Uh, what was your favorite teacher and why? So go ahead and post that in the comments below. Now, before we get to the questions for me, don't forget to leave your question for me in the comments below so I can have something to answer next week. Remember, only one question per comment, but you can leave as many comments as you like. Also, if the comments on this Ask Think are closed, just go to the most recent Ask Think in the playlist and ask your question there. Now on to the questions in the first one, of course, is about the dress. And if you guys didn't, I don't know if you were living under a rock for the last week or so, not even last week, maybe the last four or five days, uh, you may or may not know what the dress is and people want to know, do I see it as blue and black or, or, or white and gold? And actually it depends. Um, it depends on when I look at it, what is surrounding the picture. If there's white surrounding the picture, I can see it as blue and black right away. But if there's a dark background around it, I'll see it as white and gold. And I think that's what the whole thing is. I mean, you know, it has to do with the white balance set on a camera when it was taken. And first, and the other thing is, either way, whether I see a black and blue or white and gold, I still see an ugly dress. <laughs> I gotta get that out of the way first. But, um, but yeah, it has to do with the white balance of the camera. So if you put white behind it, you're gonna see the black and blue, which I think is the actual color of the dress. Uh, but if you put something dark behind it, which sort of tricks your eyes into thinking that it's in it, you know, that, that the camera has taken it uh, correctly with the right exposure, then you'll see it as white and gold. Now the next question, and um, I mean, it's, I don't know if it's a question, it is a question because they asked, did you hear that Leonard Nimoy died on Friday? And I did, and what a loss. Um, if you guys, uh, most of you guys know, or I mean, <laughs> Uh, probably know um, Leonard Nimoy is the original Spock um, and you would have seen him in the most recent um, Star Trek movie as the old Spock uh, he lived a long life I think he was in his mid 80s 85 years old I think but uh, what a loss and, and, and ah, too bad he isn't really Vulcan because then he could um, he would have he'd be like not even middle-aged yet but um, yeah quite a loss Ava says, says, wait, I think Fink's wife was an American. Is she? I'm confused. And yes, she is. She was born in New York here, uh, born and raised. Um, her parents were actually born in New York, New York as well. But, um, you know, her grandparents are Chinese from China and her parents were both Chinese. So when we're in America, uh, we don't say necessarily because they'll ask, you know, we make the assumption that she is American, right? You know, if someone were to meet her and say, oh, you know, she's American, you can tell by her accent, whatever. Oh, she says she was born in New York. She's American. So the next question is, would be is, you know, what's your what's your heritage or or what's your ethnic background? And her ethnic background is Chinese. Rayleigh Adams says, think, do you still have earrings or is the whole grown up? 
And that's surprising that you remember that. I, I can't remember how long ago I told you guys that I have Pierce Pierce on a mass think, I'm sure. Uh, but so, yeah, I mean, I haven't worn them in many, many years. Uh, but I think that with most um, ear piercings, because it's in cartilage, if you just go and put an earring back in, it'll open the hole right up again. And it won't even bleed. It's just because it's, um, you know, it, you can't probably even tell. But I, you know, I know where the hole is and you could probably put an earring right through it. Cool Cat Time says, think I was watching a video about Americans eating British chocolate and the US really doesn't have Cadbury's? Um, that's not true. Uh, you can find it. I mean, you're not gonna find it in every store, definitely, but you can find it, um, uh, but not all the types. And, and the one that I actually have a hard time finding, which is my favorite, is fruit and nut. I love it. And whenever we go away and I see it like in the airport or wherever we are, I have to get some, it's so good. Um, but yeah, you, you don't find that one very often, even though I, oh, I love it so much. Joseph asks, who does the thumbnails and what program do they use? Uh, I do them and I use Photoshop, although the character art, like, um, on, you know, well, for pretty much any of the art, like what I mean by I do the thumbnails is I take the character art that my artists have drawn and then I place it on the thumbnail and do the text. Uh, but, um, Trying to remember, uh, the person who does most of my character art now is Inkbyte, also known as Josh. And um, I think he uses some like character studio. I don't know what he uses actually. I, I don't think it's Photoshop though. And he uses a, a, a tablet to draw it on. Epic Archers plays says, are you excited for CSI Cyber? I really love CSI. I haven't watched CSI in a long time and uh, I, I I might watch it. It's just the name of the series. Like, ah, uh, they could have chosen something better, I think. <laughs> Epic Dragon Warrior says, will you ever do a live stream? Because I'm sure we all want to see you live stream. I've done them before. It's been a while since I've done one. And uh, I don't think I'm a very good streamer. One of the problems with my streaming is that I'm sort of trained for YouTube where you have to fill every second of space or try to fill every second of space with your voice or something you're saying or something you're doing. And you, I've done it before streaming and I always go into it going, okay, you don't have to talk every second of the stream. And I get that for about the first five minutes and then just it kicks in and I can't help it. And I'm talking constantly. And by the end of the two hours stream, because that's how streams work, right? You can't do a 20 minute stream. You gotta do an hour, two hours. By the end of a two hour stream, I feel like I got hit by a truck. Um, I'm exhausted uh, physically and mentally. I mean, I guess not physically because it's not like I was at the gym or something, but mentally I am destroyed. <laughs> and and uh, yeah, I'm just not that good at it. And it really, really destroys me. Nate Bryant asks, has Kopi ever bitten you? I mean, no, no. Uh, well, okay. So she has, but only because like I'll be holding something and this is rare too, but um, like I'm holding a bone, right? And she's chewing on it and gnawing on it and not really looking at what she's doing. And I'm not looking at what she's doing either. And she thinks she's chewing the bone and my finger slips into her mouth and she bites down on the bone and then gets my finger uh, like that. You know, when she's chewing like a rawhide or something, I think that's happened once or twice before. But otherwise, no, I mean, we, we I do play with her and wrestle with her. And I'll put my, like, you know, she likes to pretend like she's gonna bite. But as soon as I put my hand in her mouth, she doesn't bite down. She knows better than to bite a human. Daniel Caballero asks, think how did you react when you first saw Kopi? Oh, she's so cute and fluffy. And yeah, she was a cute little fluffy ball. Gabriel Free says, can you do a video of Kopi when she is showing all her tricks again? I mean, the last one got over 120,000 views in three days. I, I have a video. I mean, I do them randomly and rarely. Uh, just to keep them fresh and uh, not to like overload you guys with Kobe videos, but I I've got one sitting on my computer waiting for it. Jojo videos asks, hey, think how do you get money by making videos on YouTube? My dad wants to know. Uh, well, you know the, the ads that you see at the beginning of a video and you click skip ad or something like that? Uh, every time someone sees one of those, the YouTuber gets a teeny, 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 teeny bit of money. Um, and, um, and then over, you know, thousands or hundreds of thousands or even millions of views that starts to add up and if you get enough then you could actually make it a job pc man 18 says how much ram does your imac have uh 32 gigabytes 
Joseph asks, why didn't you use the real names of you and your wife for The Sims 4? I don't know. Um, I guess when I made the family, I just didn't really think about it. And also because I feel like a lot of people don't even really know my name or my wife's name. They just know me as Think and, and her as Think's wife and instead of Justin or Michelle. And it'd be like, well, why did you choose those names in like every episode? So I don't know. Aggie Johnson says, hey, Justin, I got a question for you. So here it is. In a previous Ask Thinks, someone asked if Dave and Kevin were the only one-eyed minions in the Thinks Lab, but in the Cake and Ice Cream Thinks Lab, I noticed that Chef or Cook had only one eye also. Why is that? Um, well, I think originally he had one eye as sort of a special character. So I put him in as one eye in that episode. But honestly, like, I don't remember if he's always had the one eye. <laughs> uh, so I guess he does now. So a bunch of people are asking about the custom minions mod that was in the most recent Think Slab, the surgery. And well, first of all, it is not public currently. It's just for me. I will release it to you guys. We're doing a lot of tweaks on it. Um, and it's not just minions. It's got a lot of cool stuff in it. It's got custom noodle soup with a custom recipe. It's got Kopi in it. Um, a bunch of different things, like almost enough, I mean, yeah, almost enough that I don't even need a resource pack other than for the custom skies. It's all in the mod, which is amazing. Um, but we're not done with it yet. Um, there's some tweaks that I'm making. For example, a lot of people thought the arms were too big and I didn't really even think that there was an option to make them skinnier. So we've already done that. He's tweaking a little bit more. You guys will see in the next thing slab on Wednesday that the arms are gonna be a lot thinner. They're gonna have gloves on, all this stuff that I didn't even really think about until I saw everyone's reaction to it. So yeah, once that's complete, we'll have a special episode and I'll give you guys the mod and you guys can play with it yourselves. Tjaw25 says, think I gotta know. In your Things Lab series, how do items drop and how do the doors close? Is it a texture pack or a mod or whatever? And those are two separate mods. First of all, the doors closing and the uh, trap doors closing in like a smooth form. That is the Melissa's Doors mod. That's M-A-L-I-S-I-S. -I -S. You can find that on the Minecraft forums. And um, the items dropping and landing on the ground and then they'll kind of get thrown out differently. That is the item physics mod. So those are two mods that do exactly what you're asking. Mr. Sandman98 asks, was the in real life footage used in Things Lab actually recorded by you? And if so, was it at home or at the hospital? Uh, no, it was definitely recorded by me and that was me and my wife. You can, if you look closely, uh, I know that the hands were gloved, but you can tell the difference between my hand and her hand. I mean, hers is definitely more slender fingers. Um, I got kind of short, fat fingers, uh, but you can tell the difference between uh, a guy's hand and a girl's hand in it. And those were us. Uh, in all of that um, and no we recorded it at home uh, on a tripod with the camera over top and uh, yeah she did uh, but all the supplies and everything were real uh, th those are the real gowns that 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 she uses at the hospital real gloves all of that stuff so I just thought it would be really fun to do it that way speedcraft IL asked why do you use Zelda music in the Mario Kart episode I got this question a lot <laughs> on that episode but actually that music is from Mario Kart 8. It's in the DLC. It is a Hyrule circuit. So, I mean, it is kind of Zelda music because, you know, I mean, it is, it's based on the Zelda theme, but the song was from the Hyrule circuit map. So if you people ask about the custom minion generator that's now down in the lab, and uh, if you guys didn't notice, uh, the Think Slabs are now doing the minions at the end of the video, so it doesn't interrupt the uh, commentary or the or the story and I think it's working out really well but uh, the way that I choose it obviously is the same way um, I choose the name or I choose the random comment from the previous video and then um, once I've got that uh, there's some command blocks set up and I drop down into the little command block area and change the command so that it just does a summon on that little block there some summons them as invulnerable and uh, boy or girl and then their name um, and, uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Um, but, uh, I mean, one day, eventually, very, I don't know when, but when I release a Things Lab map, uh, you guys will be able to see the commands. Kelly Kawaii says, I think, let's say there's a new update for Minecraft. You update it, realize Kopi and Ferdy scam are gone. Let's start glitch. What would you do? I would be really, really upset. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised, um, because I, I, what was I? Oh, yeah, yeah. So um, I was um, 
you know, sometimes I bring Thinks Lab or I bring the Noodle Planet into Thinks Lab. And um, I, for some reason, I needed no entities in the area. So because of the sheep and they lag and all that stuff. So I did like a slash kill um, and it, it killed everything in the area, but not those two. And I didn't understand why. And I was like, wait, what? Why Why are there two wolves still? And I was like, oh, so I did like slash kill and I did like uh, the type wolf, I think it was. And it still wouldn't kill them. I don't know what they actually are, uh, but maybe they, they'll they never die. But I don't know. They are definitely a glitch. XX, crazy craft XX says, when making an NPC, how do you change the green letters on an NPC to regular white letters? Oh, that's easy. Uh, if you go, uh, when you're editing any NPC, Go to the global tag and then go to factions and then go to like friendly because I think they default as friendly and then just change the letters or the, the color of the name to whatever. I usually use um, CCCCC, which is not quite white. It's a little bit gray. Um, and then just go ahead and, 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 you know, click OK and then save and quit. Open back up and everyone that you've already named uh, that was green will now be that grayish white color. Pandy Pancake asks, why don't you mine on the Noodle Planet? Well, I haven't really needed to. I've got more resources than I really ever wanted. But now there's a reason. Um, and it's not, well, actually, it's just for gold. Because I can always trade for emerald. I'm uh, not a gold. I can always trade for emeralds. I've got a gold farm. I have an iron farm. Uh, it's for diamonds. Um, and uh, building the vault that I just built uh, really does give me a reason to mine because I need more diamond blocks. Haven Figuera asks, who controls the minions? Uh, in all, almost all things labs, I control everything. So, um, you know, they're set to follow me and things like that. So, for example, in uh, the most recent things lab, uh, the, the surgery, uh, even my wife character and Kopi and all that stuff, that was all either followers or controlled by me. Avina S says, in the Mario Kart things lab, did you actually play with Stampy? <laughs> no. So, um, and she's talking about the footage or they are, I don't know if it's a boy or girl, but I think it's a girl. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, the, the footage that you guys saw on the TV, um, you might've noticed like the great Britain flag and it said stampy and no, I, I don't even have a Wii U. Uh, what I was going to, I didn't know what to do for the footage. I thought about it and I was like, well, I want to make it racing footage. And then I started looking for like the gameplay trailers from Nintendo and I didn't really like what those were. And then I was like, Oh, right. Dan played uh, a few games. So I asked him, hey, would you mind if I use some of your footage? Uh, I just want to use it on this TV. Here's a picture of the scene. And he's like, oh, go ahead and use it. And I was like, you don't need me to, you know, you don't want me to credit you or anything. I was like, no, no, no. Don't worry about it. Just have fun. It looks cool. And so, yeah, that was actually um, from uh, Diamond Minecarts video where he played against Stampy. Tom Bryant says, how do you make Kevin wear bow ties and speedos? It it's really hard because he is such a pain. Like I, like I swear, like when I, when I try to make him wear a tie and stuff, he complains nonstop, but I finally do stuff him in there. No, <laughs> uh, it's just skins. Um, uh, I mean now, no, it'll be just as easy. Um, but you know, it's since, since, uh, minions were, I guess, um, uh, just villagers reskinned. Uh, you just change the skin, and it makes him look like he's wearing a speedo or a bow tie or um, or scrubs, like in the most recent episode. I, I don't really stuff him into anything. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it for this episode of Ask Think. Don't forget to leave your question in the comments below so I can have something to answer next week. I'll see you guys again soon. Thanks for watching, and of course, new line.